I'm John, welcome to your Swift motorhome. We'll start the tour. This is where your water goes in. It also comes with super fill. So when you're sighted, you can um, fill it from an aqua roll by this electric point. Lower down, this is one of the dump valves. This is for the fresh water. It's electrically operated from inside the motorhome. This is your power input. It does come with a cable with the Swift motorhome. This grey one is the grey waste. Another one electrically operated from inside the van. This is where your gas is stored. This motorhome comes with a crash sensitive regulator. So you see where the yellow button is. If that pops out, it's had a jolt and that cuts the gas going into the van. And then to protect the bottle to the regulator, it's this button here where my finger is. So when you initially put a, a, a bottle on, you have to press this button and that will get the gas flowing. You are allowed to travel with the gas on in this motorhome. Moving round. This is where the exhaust vent is for this central heating when it's running on gas. There's nothing to take off. It's like a balanced flow heater at home. This is some of the accessories that comes with it. Fridge vents, electric hook up lead, all the carpets have been checked. And these are extras for the um, seats, the fr front facing seats. It also has a mechanism to wind the bed up and down to your desired position. It's ready built for a bike rack if you wanted a bike rack on the back and that's your rear view camera. This end of the garage has 230 volt electric, 12 volt and USB and it also has a few tie down points. Cassette toilet. I don't know if you're familiar with a cassette toilet. This releases it and it's also on wheels. That locates back in that groove. If the, um, the blade's open on the inside, it won't pull out. You just need to close the blade under the toilet. This is where your fridge vents go. They only need to be on below eight degrees C. It's only for winter. This is where the fuel goes. So this vehicle has add blue. It will come up on the um, instrumentation when it needs more adding. And that's the diesel in that part there. The seats on this vehicle, you can adjust the backrest with this one and the um, thigh support with this one. It's better when you sat on it. Tire pressures are on this door pillar. Underneath the seat, so this side is the um, tool kit and on the other side is the leisure batteries under the seat. The vehicle battery is located underneath this cover and this is where the bonnet releases. Down there where my finger is, if you ever needed to jump it off, that's where the positive is. And on this pole here, that's where you connect your negative. It saves you having to lift the, um, the cab floor piece. This is um, brake fluid and uh, glycol for the engine coolant. If you ever need to do anything in this section, this piece comes out. This is for the washer fluid. This middle piece comes out, makes it easier to fill. There's no dipstick on this model. It's on the instrumentation. And the vehicle might ask you to start the vehicle 
to run it up to get warm so it can check the level of the oil. Moving inside. I'm not doing it too quick, am I? This is the control panel for the vehicle. This turns the 12 volts on and off. This shows you the levels of the, um, the um, some of the tanks. This is the uh, fresh water tank. This is the waste tank. This is the um, vehicle battery. And this is the leisure battery. That light says we've got mains coming in from a main supply and the motorhome's got mains. This is the awning light. This is a tank heater, so this heats the fresh water, so it doesn't freeze, and you get up, you get um, constant supply. This is a water pump, pumps for water around the motorhome, and this is all the interior lights. One switch can turn them all off. This black device is the thermostat, so as you go in and out the motorhome, this will trip the um, heating on. Moving on to the heating, so at the minute this is what it looks like when it's dormant and it's set. So you press on this button, all the options are on the bottom screen. The top one above that line is what we choose. So click on the motorhome, so this is the temperature going up and down, whichever one you prefer. So if you want 20, press select. One more scroll to the right is to do with the water. So that's obviously off. Eco is 40, hot is 60, and then boost. If you select boost, it will only do hot water. So this is, if you wanted a shower, it's gonna prioritize the water. So we'll select hot, press the button. One more click to the right is to do with the energy input. So we've got gas is three kilowatt power. We've got gas with one one fork of electric so that means three kilowatt gas 900 watts electric that's three kilowatt gas and 1.8 electric going around with the wheel again you've got what one 900 watts and then two uh, 1.8 so that's on the electric press select one more click is to do with the fan speed so eco is slow speed and then high is fast speed. This symbol might flash similar to the water is. That doesn't mean it's on gas. That's just a symbol for heat. So and when that's stable, it means it's at the temperature. If it's not stable, it's, it, it's, it's, it's trying to reach the temperature. Some of these bottom ones, this is a, de a delayed timer. This is to set the clock. And this is to do um, you can change the centigrade to Fahrenheit, you can change the language, and you can also change the, the, um, the clock from 24 hours to 12 hours. That symbol means we've got the mains plugged in. Obviously you can run it on gas if you're in, if you're in a field, you won't have that symbol located then. So what happens is it pulses between the temperature we're looking for and the time. Moving round, we've got the fridge, you can open it either way. To leave the fridge open when you've had your holiday, this is this little gadget here, that pulls out and that goes into that position there and it leaves it ajar. So this, day, this is so you don't get the black mould. So there's four on this, there's one there, one there and two on each bottom corner. This is your mode. So that'll change the um, heating device. So on auto, if the electric trips off, which it is at the minute, it'll ignite on gas, assuming the gas has turned on in the locker. When you drive off, it will automatically go on the 12 volt. If you get an alarm message, more so on the gas, it could be what's happened is it's gone into gas lockout.
so it dispenses a little bit of gas if it doesn't if it doesn't stay ignited it puts a, it puts an alarm on it so you press the, the on and off button two seconds one elephant two elephant and then that should clear the error and it'll go back into ignition this is the temperature up and down that's the fridge Looking down there, there's the gas manifold. So if you've had a motor home before or a caravan, it's the same scenario. The gas comes in from the, um, the regulator on the outside, and then it's distributed round. So this is only worst case scenario. You're in the south of France. You suspect a leak, you can isolate an individual appliance. They've got a colour coding on this label. It says which does what. Wherever you see holes in the floor, they're not allowed to be covered over because they're there for your safety with the gas being a liquid and it dispenses it through the floor. Wherever this is a gas appliance, you'll find some holes in the floor. So you've got floor ventilation and you've also got roof ventilation. That side's cold. In this locker is where the uh, valves are to um, get rid of the waste water or empty the fresh tank. It, it tells you on which one's which. So that one's fresh, that one's waste. This microwave doesn't come with a plate, it's the latest generation. There's no turntable inside. It's a new setup. This is to turn the electric hot plate on. Yep, that's getting hot. That's the oven lit. This is a combined oven and grill. So on this setting is the oven. It does take a lot more pre-warming than a domestic oven if you're going to try and cook it by a time method. Then this side operates the grill. So there's your grill lit. You can buy more shelves and the shelf goes up and down three positions. This switch is for the table control, that's the fuse for it, so it's a simple up and down and then you can use the table to make part of the bed. So this is a cassette toilet, if it won't come out it's because this is still open. So as I mentioned on the outside, if that's open you'll never pull it out. When that's closed you can pull it out. This is the indicator to say when the cassette's full. We're going to test this on PDI and this is the rinse button. This is coming from the drinking water. So some people buy some of the Thetford spray to spray around to sanitize the bowl. We'll just confirm we've got water in the washroom. That's cold. That's hot. And there's your sink plug. A sample of chemicals for the toilet. This is your shower. This has the um, eco shower, it's supposed to give you a 30% longer shower with those holes. It sucks air in through those holes, mixes it with the water, gives you 30% longer shower. And the shower curtain tray door is held back by the clip. These doors okay. 
these doors need to be pegged back by these bolts otherwise they're just going to shake backwards and forwards so they need to be in that lock position both sides this is a tv point and a 230 for tv mounting in this area plenty of wardrobe space Roof vent is a pop-up type. Push this black part in and the handle goes up like that. Ideally for transportation that it needs to be in the closed position. This is how the bed's made up. You turn the cushions over as best you can. These backrests will even it up and then you put your bed in in some of the storage in the lockers over above. And then the next video will show you how to make the car seats up. Thank you. Facing seats for passenger three and passenger four. That piece goes back. This is where you can access, put your legs in. So your legs aren't under your chin. That folds back to there. This is an extra piece of cushion. The shoes are stored in the garage. Goes in that position. There is a Velcro on there that holds it in position. This is your bet another piece of base. That's so. And then this is your backrest. And that's the position for the third passenger or the fourth passenger. Thank you. And that is the power supply unit. So on this version, it's the latest version. If one of these fuses blows, it'll ignite. It will look, it will indicate a colour underneath which one's blown. This is a description what every fuse does. So this is to do with the 12 volt and this side is 230. If you load bedding into this area and this button gets depressed, it kills all the 12 volts. So if you're leaving the vehicle for a long period of time, you're laying it up for the winter, press this button and it'll preserve the life of the leisure battery. This side is a 230 volt, so this is um, reverse polarity. You're going to notice this more maybe in a foreign country. If this illuminates, it means you've got reverse polarity, but the PSU sorts it out. This wants to be on all the time. This is a leisure battery charger. You can leave that on all the time. And this is for the central heating on electric. Under here, you've got similar to a home. You've got MCB, RCD. That's RCD needs testing regular for your safety. MCB1 is sockets. MCB2 is heating. MCB3 is fridge and charger. This is where all the paperwork is for the motor home. This is a spare set of keys. The um, engine key doesn't have a flip key, it's just a basic key. This is for the um, reversing mirror so you can change some of the parameters with that the blue information is to do with the vehicle and this is the swift owner's handbook and there's also a section in there that's for the service stamps these pamphlets are handy to have in the vehicle so if there's more problem solving than there would be in there so this is to do with the panel. You also get a sample of fuses. Yeah, every appliance has its own little book. Moving on to the vehicle, I'll try and show you how to check the um, oil level. So this side you can access the middle screen and click onto that you can scroll across that's your trip that's your average fuel consumption the distance between Phillips and your average speed miles, miles per hour going down 
this is where you can get into the information for the oil. So as you can see, the oil is virtually full. That's the oil temperature. The oil life, how many miles it's got to go before it will um, need a service. And this is the battery charge for the vehicle. And the AdBlue. So you can actually see the AdBlue on a scale where years gone by, it just a, an idiot light came up and you had to add more fluid. That's it for the vehicle information. This side is the indicators. The um, outside piece turns to turn the lights on. And this side is the washer wipers. This is the rear view camera and also the parking aid. This is the head unit, it's got quite a few functions on it. Radio, pair your phone, vehicle information. You can do more different things on here, your trip speeds. I think we're done.